Hello and welcome at Tekwana, the NTEC New Zealand Computer Museum. In our last session we talked about how you could remotely access our Raspberry Pi just by using a terminal software like this PuTTY program. You may remember that we could work quite efficiently with a secure shell and could issue a number of Unix commands and, co and configure our Raspberry remotely, which is quite nice. However, didn't you miss a little bit a graphical user interface as we are used to it from Windows or Mac OS or other X11 Linux based or Unix based graphical user interfaces? And of course, we do know that also the Raspberry Pi comes with a graphical user interface, the, usually the LXDE, the light, lightweight X11 desktop. So why can't we access it with our terminal software? Well, terminal software is not made for graphical user interfaces. It is made to access certain protocols like Telnet, remote login or a secure shell, not graphical servers. We do know though that for instance under Windows we can access a graphical user interface using an RDP protocol, the remote desktop connection that employs the remote desktop protocol, RDP, and we can access other user interfaces, other Windows computers. Wouldn't it be nice to have something like this as well for our Raspberry Pi? And yes, there is actually the option to get this RDP protocol also for the Raspberry Pi. It is just called XRDP. And in order to make the Raspberry supporting this protocol, we just need to load this protocol. That's all. So we use our good old terminal program PuTTY, log in as I have done here already, and just issue the sudo command for elevating our credentials. Use the apt-get command for getting a package. Say install, and then what is it what we want to install? Well, the XRDP protocol. And that's all what we have to do. We press the enter button. It's trying to get the package from the internet. It's reading it. Then it starts to install it and then it's done. Here in our case though, it says just zero upgraded, zero newly installed. Well, we had it already installed for testing purposes. But normally in your case, you would just get a message that's all running fine and that you are good to go. And having done this, we have nothing more to do than launch our uh, remote desktop connection program, put in the IP address, here it is already in, just as we did it with our PuTTY program 192.168.1.101. You need to find the IP address from your router. We had discussed this earlier. And you say connect, and then usually it would try connect. Here, this is typical for RDP, it tells you that you haven't got a certificate yet, so it asks you whether you are okay to connect to this computer. Of course, we are prepared to connect to our Raspberry, so we say just yes, and then it starts up, get here a nice login screen to our Raspberry Pi. We put in username Pi, still our password is Raspberry, said earlier already we advised to change it. And if we say OK, then it just connects to the graphical user interface. Get a little bit of dialogue here telling us what it's doing. And here we go. Here comes the graphical user interface, the LXDE desktop of the Raspberry. Just as an information, this lightweight X11 desktop environment is considered as the smallest one and um, it doesn't require a lot of resources, which is good for the Raspberry Pi, which comes partially just with 256 or 512 kilobytes of RAM. So it is a very sort of lightweight graphical user interface. 
However, we have a lot of stuff where we have Mathematica um, software here, a uh, license. We got a terminal license, of course, if we really want still to work in our uh, used uh, terminal session style. We got a little software for beginner scratch, which is a bit of logo type, just with a cat instead of a turtle. We got Python, we will talk another time about it, a configuration tool for the Wi-Fi, an internet browser, and so on and so on. We got also here a start button I want to put your focus on. And then we have here a lot of accessories, education, graphics, and so on. I want to keep it short, so let's go just to the file manager, which is comparable with the Finder on the Mac OS or with the Windows File Explorer. And we see in a very similar style here the contents of our home directory, home pie. We talked about that earlier. If you have seen one of our earlier sessions, you may remember that we just copied the Python program with all its contents. If we want to expect the contents here, we just double click, we have our files, we can go back. And if we want to copy it in a folder called demo, that was what we did the last time, we just say copy, we click again on the desktop, say paste, and then of course it realizes it has already a folder, Python asks us for a new name. We type in demo, say, rena say rename, and off we go. And now we have a new folder called demo. Here we go. And if we open it, it has exactly the same files as we had before. If we want to inspect the files, well, even this is easier. You may remember we did that with test one. We just double click on it and get a nice editor window opened. And we can all see it here as we were used to it. We can delete those files simply by dragging them to the rubbish bin. And it asks us again for security reasons and we wanted to delete test two as well. Put it in the rubbish bin as well. If we realize, oh, we shouldn't have really deleted that, just do this one here again, say yes. If we just realize we shouldn't, well, we can just go back, go to the rubbish bin and drag it out back to our Pi home directory. Or we can even, if we don't want, if we want to keep it in the same one, we just do a right mouse click, say restore, and it goes back. Let's do that for this one as well. So the rubbish bin is empty, but if we go back to our Python di uh, demo directory, look, it's all back as it was. And here we go just back home to our di home directory. That's all. So this is quite a powerful file manager doing it much easier than no, uh, remembering, reminding any commands. Let's close that. And what's probably the next most important bit is of course the internet. We have here an internet folder. My Dory is quite a popular browser for this LXDE environment. This should launch our internet or our Midora web browser. In this case, of course, we wanted to launch our own website, the Tecvana website here it just comes up. Um, while it's still loading, I might probably take the opportunity just to show you even the LXDE environment supports two desktops. If we go here to the bottom, we see desktop one popping up, desktop two. So if we click here on desktop two, then we get a fresh new desktop which where we could work on. So we have by default two desktop environments where we could switch between. Here we just come back to our Tecvana website. In case you are keen to, to have a little bit closer look what we are doing, just feel free, have a look. We have very exciting exhibits here. We have old programs, old computers, and most of them are going live. We have lots of game consoles to play. So please feel welcome to pop in, have a look, and check out what we have on offer. 
Now I want to close our Tecvana website again, so we just click on the close button. What else could I show you? We talked about a file browser and internet browser. Of course, if you want to do programming, we talked about Python. So we can start Python, which is a really powerful program to, to develop software. You can see there's always a little bit of delay because look, I'm just running here a little Raspberry with 256K, which other graphical user interface would run so nicely. I want to show you just one little program we did here at Tecvana, which is really exciting. We go again to our Python folder. Folder, where, where have we got it? Just slide a little bit to the right. Double click here on Python and I want to show you the clock because this is a very special clock that we developed here, here at Tecvana. Um, here's the code. We just want to execute this program with one module. And let's have a look what it's doing. Shouldn't take really long. Here we go. And this is our BCD clock. And if you don't read it on the first spot, well, I let you know the clock here in the taskbar on the right hand side, side tells us it's 13, 20 and 24 hours mode. And this is exactly what the clock is saying. If you want to figure out how, stop this video and have a closer look. Give you one hint. These red ones are the hours, the yellow one the minutes, the green one are the seconds. If you want to build such a clock, contact us and we are happy to assist you. For the moment we want to close it, close the program and perhaps just out of interest, I might actually just reopen it again very briefly because I just wanted to show you um, that it is quite, quite a good habit if you're software is big like this one you can go in full screen mode and then you can have a closer look on your code you can minimize the window of course now we have it just as an icon here you can bring it back as you can see and you can bring it back to the resizable mode and let's close it now so this was a little bit a tour through uh, the graphical user interface I want to come to a close, but not without showing you one last bit. And this is called the Pi Store. So if you are into look after other programs, whether it's more sort of for commercial use, whether you have to do, let's say, um, word processing, you can do that. If you are after games, as we can see here, you can do this as well. So this store gives you quite a few things you you can look after you you will find entire office suits let me go a little bit further here to get tutorials developer tools you get even web server for the raspberry pi so there's lots to find on this um on this website so yes feel free to have a closer look i leave it with that i just close this window now and if you want to finish your session, you go again to this little button, say log out. And then we just confirm here we can see the LXDE, the Lightweight X11 desktop environment and we log out. Yes, we do. And now we are back.